Welcome back, America. It's Hugh Hewitt for the ReliefFactor.com studio inside the Beltway, joined by Sonny Bunch, the official movie critic of the Hugh Hewitt Show. He is, of course, with Cinestate and a Washington Post contributor. Moreover, he is one of the uh, the charter members of the Love Actually fan club. Uh, they gather annually and sometimes more often than annually to watch Love Actually and sing the songs and say the lines. Did you know they're remaking it with Boris Johnson in the role of Hugh Grant and Hugh Grant reprising the role of Billy Bob Thornton? Did you know that? Uh, that sounds like an amazing, amazing uh, reboot. I, I can't believe that we at the Society have not been consulted about this. Well, I, it, your, your club is, uh, of course, unofficial, but it is right. enthusiastic. Sonny Bunch, what are we going to see this week? Because although you are unpatriotically not telling people to go see Midway, perhaps you've got something for me to see yeah. this week. Well, so it's it's a really weird week at the box office. You, it's one of these weeks where there basically is nothing. Uh, it's kind of a dead zone. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. the, the only the only wide release is Playmobil the movie. Uh, what? A, 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 what? It is a, a an animated film based on the Playmobil uh, toys. You know, the little like not quite Lego things that that toddlers play with. Oh yes, I, I know it, those. I remember those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you'll be shocked to, to learn they did not screen this one for critics. No, and I'm not uh, going to see that one. I'd see a right, horror right. movie before I saw that uh, one. <laughs> so, so they thought uh, it would be the Lego movie, huh? So Yeah, so let, I, that is, I think, what they were going for after the enormous success of the Lego movie. As you know, Hollywood is nothing but uh, copying all the way down as people do this and that uh, over and over again. So I, I figured we could go and, and look back at a couple of the other movies we haven't discussed yet. Uh, this 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 time around. Now, Hugh, I forget. Did we? I, I talked about the Irishman, but did you? Have you seen it? I, I haven't seen it. No spoilers. Okay. No spoilers. Well, I, I, you know, three, you know what I've been doing, Sonny. In fact, I can consult you on this. I've been rewatching every one of the Star Wars movies on the Disney Channel, which I subscribe to. I'm up to number uh, five because, honest okay. to goodness, I can't remember half of this stuff. Right? It goes sure, back to sure. 1978. I saw the original Star Wars in theaters, and I've decided that maybe the worst movie ever made is the first Star Wars movie, the first episode number one with Jar Jar Binks. Uh, yeah. So are so you started all the way back at you started at episode one. Yeah. And you're working you're working your way forward. Just okay. through the you, nine, you, so I'm going to have seen the eight when we get I'm forgetting Han Solo and all the sidebars. I just want the sure, story. Sure. sure. So it, it's funny, there there's actually a uh, there was a debate about how to watch the the movies a few years back. Uh, people saying, you know, well, I don't really want to watch the prequels. Do we need to watch the prequels? And the, the order, the most amusing order that anyone came up with was called Machete Order. And it was basically you watch, uh, you watch uh, A New Hope, Episode 4, and Empire Strikes Back. And then you essentially uh, treat movie uh, Episodes 2 and 3, Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Jedi, as flashback movies. Revenge of the Sith, and, yes. And you, yeah, Revenge of the Sith. Sorry, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, as flashback movies, and you skip the first one entirely, <laughs> um, and then you then you go back and you start watching in order again with Return of the Jedi. Uh, and no, uh, don't. If you were new, if you were ten year old boy and you'd never been into a movie before, you'd start with number one. Totally, and and this is this is the thing that all of us uh, old people forget is that the the youngs actually really love the prequels. Yeah, the, the younglings, the as we call the, them. The, the prequels are are to like the you know uh, uh, young millennials and Generation Z uh, as the original Star Wars trilogy is to you know Xers Me. and Boomers and yeah, yeah exactly exactly uh, when, when I we see get, it at age twenty one in the theater and that's what I was I saw it in California I remember it like yesterday it was a revelation but you know Sonny did we really think the special effects were that good you're not as old as I am by a lot but, so, but did we really did boomers? I'm a young boomer. I'm a 63 year old boomer. Did yeah. we really think that it was that good? Because I th I remember being overwhelmed with the idea that wow, look what they did. Oh sure, sure. I mean, I, like it is it is real. I, I mean, look, it, it's not like today where you can you look at the difference the difference between um, uh, Revenge of the Sith and Episode Four, A New Hope, uh, is instructive, right? That movie, The Revenge of the Sith, opens with that huge space firefight with the yep. ships zooming all around and working on all different planes of, of space. And it like, it actually probably resembles what a space battle would look like more than uh, uh, what they look like in the original trilogy, where, where they look essentially like sea battles. 
I mean, you, you have ships kind of lined up uh, across a two-dimensional space going at each other instead of, you know, coming from all different angles. Do you know, uh, Sonny, but, my... But, but, but I, I would say that those, those space battles in the original trilogy are more effective for being slightly smaller scale and less chaotic. I mean, I, I don't well, know. When the Naval Academy organizes its second annual Starfleet conference, they actually did this, Captain Mark Vandroff, Captain Jerry Hendricks, and a bunch of Star Wars nerds, at the Naval Academy, got together and did an entire conference on fleet architecture because the fleets are based on Navy fleets and whether mm -hmm. they have cruisers and battle stars and stuff like that. And it was fascinating. All the midshipmen turned out. The room was packed. Hundreds of people were there to geek out on Star Wars. I've got to invite you to that because the fleet architecture side of it, the scientific side of how do you balance the 355 ship uh, Imperial Navy. Uh, in yeah. It's just wild. So um, you got another two minutes here, Sonny. Okay. <laughs> what Sorry, do we got? We've been, we've been talking about that. So, uh, you know, the, out, out in theaters now, a movie that people uh, have, have been turning out for and is, is, is modestly entertaining, uh, Knives Out. Oh, Knives I've out. heard about this. So, yeah, so Knives Out is, is, speaking of Star Wars, it is the, uh, it's the new Who Done It from Ryan Johnson. Um, who directed The Last Jedi. And it, it has a kind of star-studded cast, you know, Daniel Craig, uh, Don Johnson, Jamie Lee Curtis, Chris Evans, uh, Michael Shannon. It, it's, got a really, it's got a really fun cast. And I will say that the movie, the movie really works best if you're just into watching actors have some fun on screen. Uh, as a whodunit, it's, it's okay. It's not, it's not amazing or anything. Um, and, and it is, it is like kind of, it's one of these movies that is so, uh, kind of predictably liberal, uh, and, uh, progressive that it gets, it gets a real boost from critics from like, oh, like Frozen 2? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I, you know, Frozen 2 actually hasn't, hasn't gotten that same critical bump. I like. I'm I'm a little surprised, but it is it, it's getting it's getting relatively mediocre. Uh, oh, it's Frozen you know. PC is what it ought to be, yeah. not Frozen Two, but Frozen PC. And I mean, my yeah. grandkids loved it. They're little, they're tiny, but Frozen PC is what it is. Yeah, yeah. And, and you get a lot of movies like that. There's also there's a Korean movie out right now called Parasite, which is again it's very entertaining. It's it is uh, from it's it's about a family of grifters, basically a family of grifters ingratiate themselves with the uh, family of upper class uh, Koreans and kind of is Hunter to... Biden in it? <laughs> no, oh. no, no. Uh, and, and, uh, but no, it, no, it is a, it is a funny, it's a, it's like a funny little, uh, Joe Biden's uh, going to call me fat now. It's okay. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> what, well, I, can you do a push up? Uh, contest? That's, that's, where we're, that's where the presidential campaign is headed. At this point. I know it's a uh, very elevating thing. You got 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. So this movie Parasite is again, it's entertaining and it's kind of clever and it's fun and the acting is very good. And um, as long as you can get past the subtitles, I, I often have a problem with subtitles, but not so much here. Um, but it has been elevated from solid and entertaining to like visionary masterpiece because it is nominally a critique of capitalism. Now, oh like, dear, I'll be honest. I, I'll okay, be, I, you I, killed you it. Know, I, yeah, if you if you can if you can kind of. Uh, I'll be honest. I have a hard time taking a critique of capitalism seriously when the film the, the film's heroes are uh, grifter criminals. And yeah. uh, you've you know, just killed it for me. I'm not doing that. Next week, can you do the Crown, please? We could talk. Uh, sure, I watched the whole season. We could have talked about the Crown. This we'll week. be ready. We we'll be next. ready. I'm only at episode three, and it's wonderful. Okay. But we can talk about it next week. Sunny Bunch at Sunny Bunch from. The move that his company, Sinistate, I can never remember. Someday it's going to launch and we'll be able to read about it, Sinistate. But he's a Washington Post contributor. He's our official movie critic. And our official poet, of course, is Tarzana Joe. Joined now by Tarzana Joe, poet laureate of the Hugh Hewitt Show. Hello, Joe. Hi, uh, you. How are you today? I'm terrific. I'm really feeling good, but I'm looking for a more entertaining programming.